Hello everybody and welcome to another Angler X video. Today I'm on Pool 6 looking for summertime smallmouth. We're going to be focusing on some different types of habitat today, but it really comes down to rocks, wood, and sand. And you got to have current. Let's see what we can do today. I think it's going to be a great show. First spot we're going to try actually is not on the Mississippi River. It's on the Trimpolo River. The smallmouth will push up from the Mississippi and, and inhabit some of these great points that are in the Trimpolo River. And this is one of them. One of my go-to baits for smallmouth in the summer is a, is a popper. I like to use the all black popper, but it Top water is just an absolutely awesome way to catch smallmouth. They love hitting surface baits. Doesn't have to be a popper, it could be a whopper plopper, it could be the Chapo from Berkeley, it could be a walk bait like a Zara Spoop. But uh, anything top water, smallmouth love it. When we talk about catching smallmouth, you really want to look at current breaks and ways that they can ambush prey. So, what we're looking at is drops whether it's a sand drop or a drop created by a rock bar or a rock point. And rock points and sand points are really good areas to start looking for smallmouth just because they'll push bait up against there. They use that structure to force the bait up and then they'll start feeding on them. And it's not always necessarily smallmouth in these spots, but it's primarily a smallmouth type location. Anytime you have sand and rock or sand and rock and wood, or wood and sand, any combination of those three things. You can see this point, it, it's pretty classic type smallmouth habitat. If you look at it, you can see the water coming around the point. There's a rock, the rocks extend out, forcing the water to curve around, and that creates this little back eddy here. And the smallmouth will sit either right up on the rocks above the point, or they'll sit back in behind the point in this uh, back eddy or or current seam here. And then the tail waters, you can see there's a branch back here. These are the types of areas that they'll hang out and chase bait. This is a really tip, really nice looking spot just because of the, the rock wall here. They can force bait up against that and, uh, and eat it as they, as they see fit. But there's one, got our first fish on. Like a decent fish. Oh yeah, nice smallmouth. There we go. Nice little guy. Gotta be real careful when using these baits. They got so many hooks on them. And smallmouth, they do not like to sit still. So, go, on, nice fish. That's a good way to start the day. We'll get him back. As you can see, there's a considerable amount of current coming through here. And I caught that fish right on, right on top of the rocks there that form this point. Once you've kind of thrown your popper around a little bit or your top water, you can switch over to a, another kind of subsurface bait, like a swim jig or a, a crankbait, and just see if you can get a bite on that. They're not always willing to eat the top water, but you're gonna get the most active fish right off with the top water. And you can come back through and just see if there's anything else willing to bite with some other baits. You can even try a Texas rig or a Carolina rig. If you hit some of these sand points out on the Mississippi, we may be throwing a Carolina rig. There's one. Nice fish. This could be a largemouth. We got him right by that stump over there. It's kind of a typical largemouth spot. But it's not uncommon to uh, find largemouth and smallmouth in the same areas. That one hit the black popper also. It's a nice fish. But anywhere you can find these current areas with wood, current breaks and rocks, you're gonna find either one. Get him back. Well, right now, we're coming up on a main river. This is the main channel out here. This is a point off a little island. 
And as you can see, it's just full of wood. It's not very deep, but it doesn't have to be to hold smallmouth. This is a real classic smallmouth type spot. Ooh, I just got, just got swiped at already. Just above that tree there. Might be, might be one we want to follow up with a jig or something. Pulling up on another point here, another main channel point. You're going to see me using this popper a lot just because it's been just an absolute awesome bait for me for smallmouth this year. And it's just a really enjoyable way to search over some cover and fish points and sand drops. And, and it's just fun to see them explode on the bait. So, But it's been really effective for me. I've caught my two biggest fish of the year on this black popper. So it's going to be my go-to bait on any of these points for these smallmouth. I'm struggling a little bit today with the, with the floating grass because it does pick that up pretty easily, but the idea is to get a few pops in and then clean it off. I've been cleaning it off almost every cast, but if you can make that count, that cast count, get a couple of good pops in before it hangs up with grass. That's kind of the goal here. But no matter what you throw out here, you're going to get hung up with grass. The fish can really be hanging out anywhere on these points. They, it can be off the point, way out on the flat, out in front of the point. They can be hanging really close to some tree or some cover that might be off the point. Or they could be right up against the point itself. And it, it just kind of depends on, on the fish and what they're eating and time of day or whatever I don't know what what factors come into play but the important thing is that you understand that and you try all this all the areas of the point before there's one before you consider it a oh god lost another one oh I've lost uh well I've missed three fish in a row now see my hook's a little bent out I'm gonna fix that So my hooking percentages aren't great today. That one felt like a pretty good fish. It's too bad. You guys don't watch videos so you can watch me miss fish. I know that. So we're gonna keep, keep grinding here and see if we can put a fish in the boat for you. Sometimes when they're slashing at the bait, it's just hooking them on the outside of the mouth or on the top of the head or wherever it may be. They're not actually getting it in the mouth so they can pull off pretty easily. But all you can do is keep trying. That probably brings up a good point of when you do get a fish, what is the best way to uh, land that fish or to fight that fish? And I guess I've found that once he's hooked, you wanna keep your rod tip down and just a steady reel. Just keep steady pressure. You don't wanna pump or pull on that fish because you don't know how well they're hooked and just steady reel with your tip down all the way into the boat that'll that'll help prevent them from jumping a little bit so far uh, I've had a little bit of a rough time getting them in here What's up everybody? We're back out on pool six today. I missed a lot of fish yesterday, so I came back out because nobody wants to watch me miss fish. So we got to catch them today and put together a show for you. You can't just come out and, and say, I'm going to do the same thing and expect different results. So I brought my lucky charm with, <laughs> and I made some lure modifications. So hopefully it's a different story today. We hook some fish and actually get them in the boat. Let's get after them. Oh, I got him. It was just a big mouth, so I was gonna let it go. Yeah, it's gone now. Large mouth. That's what I was saying. Yeah, we don't want those. Yeah, we, don't, we don't want that. Definitely didn't want to get that in the boat. It's the last day of the tournament. That would have. That would have helped you.
Fish on. My first fish of the day. And it's a little smallmouth. Here we go, guys. Not a giant, but we'll take him. Oh, a nice little guy on the popper. Get him back. Fish. Little guy. There's some, there's some, yep, another little smomo. Yeah, where's mom and pa? He hit the red eye shad. That are good. Oh, okay. We're just in a back channel just off the Mississippi River right off the main channel and pretty shallow except down along this this one side it's a little deeper five six feet and then it it tapers up slowly over to the other shore where it goes up to basically nothing but we're just casting around and a few fish in here there should be bait fish and other goodies for them to eat swimming around in here so. Fish. Ooh, it's a good one. Good fish. Hooked up. We got a nice smallmouth on here. We're just working down this wing dam here. To crush the black popper. Yeah, real nice one. Mama. Mama? Yeah. Got a, big mouth for a, got a big old belly on that guy. There we go. Nice fish. Nice big fat belly. They're really fattening up this time of year. Feeding on shad and whatever else is around, but get him back. We just have a have a wing dam. It comes out from shore and then it turns and it goes downstream. You can just kind of see the ripples. And uh, he hit the popper right on top of that wing dam. Made a little change to my lure today to see if it helped uh, my hookups. And I added an extra split ring to each hook. It gives the hook a little more freedom to move around and doesn't give that fish uh, any leverage for popping the hook out. But that one seemed to stay on. I don't know if that split ring helped or not. But... Fish. All I. Not quite. There you go, a nice little walleye on the red eye shed. Just pull up to this point. Point's been good for smallmouth, but obviously there can be walleye on it as well. Hi, baby. <laughs> Hi, baby. You got your papa. It's my papa popping. <laughs> There's one. Are you kidding me? Good fish. Good fish. On the popper. Come on, baby, come on in. Ooh. Oh, yeah, nice small mouth. Where'd 
is coming up. Sweetheart. There we go. Another good smallmouth on the popper. Very nice fish to end of the day. Had a good day on the water. It was a little slow, but we got a couple nice fish. This one came on a, on a main channel point. You can see the log cross there. And then up along the shore, there's a sand drop. And I was bringing that popper along that sand drop, and he hit it. This is the perfect time of day to get these smallmouth on top water the sun's going down and the smallmouth are chewing we'll get him back hey there's something wrong with my rod will you look at it yeah i'll just <laughs> i don't see anything wrong with it <laughs> there's an there's another popper there Got him. I think I took my horseshoe right up out of my booty and I shoved it right in there. Switched over, switched over to a smaller popper on a spinning tackle and uh, just hooked up. Oh, that's fun. Oh, 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 he is a fighter. Only got eight pound test on here. Oh, doubled up. Oh, you got a giant. Easy, 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 easy. Get him in, get him in. That's a giant, get him in. Oh my gosh, look at that small mouth. Oh my gosh, look at that small mouth. Yes. <laughs> you may have you just. exactly what I needed. Oh my gosh, she just crushed a giant. That's gonna be the biggest fish of the tournament. Oh my gosh, Nikki. <laughs> That's a big small mouth. That's a little small. Holy cow, I'm gonna let mine go. Careful, there's still a hook in his mouth. Oh, there is. I don't know what to say, but I haven't caught a fish all day and then I catch this giant, so I'm really excited. He's over four pounds. <laughs> Definitely, should we weigh him? 4.41, almost a four and a half pound smallmouth. A great fish here take him we had a great day on the river caught some nice fish nikki ended up with this giant four and a half pound smallmouth just an absolute beast we're gonna let him go he was ready to go but what a great fish and a great way to end the evening yes, that's what I needed. that was your best bass ever by yeah, far that was awesome. are you okay i'm good that's what you get for stealing my lure <laughs> Strategic <laughs> and it worked. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. 40 and a quarter. <laughs> Sun's going down. We're catching smallmouth. Can't beat it. <laughs> 